I just want to say, people may not understand it, and they may think it's a, they may call it a little selfish and stuff, but I guess it's from my experience. But, you know, I just caught a little glimpse of a video right quick, and a person, a mother was crying, and, you know, due to a letter that one of her children wrote, I think maybe it was a son, and, you know, she was, had tears, you know, and she was emotional, and, um, <clears throat> then she, you know, and she says that, um, you know, you, you mostly want to give your kids what you did not have, and, well, I'm just going to talk on that, I just want to talk a little bit on that, you know, and people may not understand my point of view, right? And they may look at it as being selfish. And they may look at it, oh, my God, she really said, oh, she don't care nothing about her kids. But see, just like I've always said, and just in case somebody want to think and write in the comment, make it make sense, just like I've always said, I don't have to make it make sense to you. You know, something came out and I was sat down. I was, in a sense, ostracized due to the fact of my feelings. Hey, Siri. Uh -huh. What does the word ostracize mean? Ostracize means exclude someone from a society or group. Okay. Hey, Siri. What does patronize mean? Patronize means treat in a way that is apparently kind or helpful, but that betrays a feeling of superiority. Do you want to hear the remaining one? Yes. It means frequent a store, theater, restaurant, or other establishment as a customer. Okay, so, you know, as I said, you know, People may not quite understand what I'm about to say, and they may put it in the category, oh, she's selfish. And just like I said, I was sat down, you know, because of something that was said in reference to someone else. And there may be some more things that's to it that that's not being said or told to me, but other people know. And other people may agree to it. Other people may say, oh, that's what should have happened to her. Oh, she not saved no more. Oh, she got a demon in her. Oh, she can't be evangelist no more. She can't preach no more. And people may have a different outlook now on me due to the fact of what they saw or heard come out of my mouth. But one thing I will stand by that having the Holy Ghost in me, it causes me not to tell no lies. It causes me to be truthful because me as an evangelist, regardless of whether people consider me to be one, regardless of whether people acknowledge me as an evangelist, regardless of whether people honor me, whether in their testimony or face to face or publicly or whatever, as evangelist, I am evangelist because God uh, elevated me to evangelist, right? So I'm going to hold that either until the day I die or until God decides to place me somewhere else. Not men, God. So now, with that being said, so now, my upbringing with my grandmother was never where I was pampered. Never where whatever I wanted, I got. Never was, um, I'm not going to say I'll go without so Sharon can eat. I'm not going to say that because I'm sure there was times that it did transpire. But I have to say that it was never in my vision. I can't sit and say that my grandmother went without eating so I could eat. 
I, I can't never say that my grandmother gave me her last dollar to for me to go and buy me something to eat or buy me some clothes or or whatever else and she walked around raggedly or she walked around like she ain't had no sense or she walked around looking like she wasn't serving God. No, that I did not see. And I'm not going to say she did that. So what am I saying? She never actually put it me ahead of her. But what she did do for me was love me. And her love is what was being shown. Not the things that she so much did. Now, she did a whole lot for me. I want you to understand. She did a whole lot for me. But what she did for me wasn't wasn't in the perspective oh i want you to i want to do this so that you will have a better life my grandmother quit her job so that i will be where i am today whereas people may say i work two and three and four jobs so that my children can have what i didn't have no she didn't do that she quit her job as I said in a previous video, I came to her at the age of three years old. Now, wherever my life was prior to them three years old, apparently didn't have nothing to do with her. And it wasn't time for me to come into her life at the time. But when God felt like it was time for me to come into her life, that's when he brought me into her life. And she quit her job so that she could take care of me and my cousin at the time so she retired early getting a lesser check so that she could take care of me you see what i'm saying because there was no one else that was willing to take care of me all the family in the world i may had or had i may had or have they didn't volunteer to take care of me all the people that my father may have known, he didn't volunteer, took me to them to take care of me. He took me to his mother. Why? Because he knew his mother. Now, he didn't know it was in God's plan, but he knew his mother was going to take care of his child. And he probably had other thoughts of raising me the way that he wanted to raise me. But... Mommy said not so. God said not so. So now, we're as people, and I, I don't want nobody to take this wrong. I, this is a disclaimer. I don't want nobody to take what I'm saying against their lives. Like, I'm trying to say something negative based on the, the decision that they made. This is my life, and this is, this is a decision that I made. And this is the life that I'm living or have lived up to the present point. And these are the people that I lived with. And these are the things that they did with me. This is what my, this is about me. I'm not saying nothing against anybody that worked one job to 10 jobs. Anyone that, that stripped or anyone that stole or anyone that, that lied to get ahead for their children. I'm not here to judge you. I'm talking about me, my life, and who raised me. So, with that being said, so my grandmother didn't do that. But, just like I said, what she did do was show me love. I always ate. I was always taken care of. I was not abused. She didn't allow people to abuse me. And people may not have too much agreed with her upbringing and a lot of people may not even have known her upbringing that's why when a lot of times i bring out things to people and let people know well i'm sorry i i i, I apologize that why i apologize for the things that maybe my ancestors did to you no not even my ancestors who said devil 
I apologize. And, and why am I apologizing? I don't know because I wasn't in there. I wasn't in their home. But I apologize for however the person was treating you, your parents, your 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 grandparents, whoever was just treating you based on their knowledge of what maybe Bishop Mingo was saying or maybe my grandmother was saying. But I can only tell y'all how I was raised in my house. And when I say y'all, I'm not talking about you, the video watcher. I'm talking about the person I was talking to at that time. I apologize for it. But certain things that y'all are doing or not doing or saying or not saying, these things I didn't raise up with. These things I wasn't a part of. These things I didn't hear. Of. So when people is selfish, I don't know about that. Because I wasn't raised up in a selfish home. When people is is trying to get over on people or people doing underhand stuff to people, that wasn't in my household. And I feel this is the reason why people don't really understand me. And this is the reason why I class with people negatively because I takes on what I be taught. And when something is told to me, spiritually, you got to do something for me spiritually. Naturally, I got to live in this world. Naturally, I got to get up. I got to eat and all that. But when things are put in my ear or, or said to me from wherever it may be said from. If it doesn't hit me spiritually, I'm not accepting it. Because then it's not going to do me no good. Because my life is here with Christ and God. So therefore, what you're saying to me got to agree with what God wants for me. I'm just not going to go do what you say do because of who you are. If God says, no, nah, that's not for you. That's not for you. That's for somebody else, but it's not for you. And I don't want you to do it. I'm not doing it. So that's where all the problems come in with people. So when people hear me say things or people uh, uh, see me react a certain way to certain things, it's the spiritual aspect of it. I was raised in a spiritual home, living a natural life. So what I was taught in my home spiritually corresponds with what God said in his word, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So I was trained spiritually. It wasn't no hand, it wasn't no uh, hands-on job, a job on the how's it? On the job training. No, it wasn't nothing like that. It was a spiritual training that Mommy and Gaga gave me through the word, through mommy sitting down talking to me. That's probably why I'm so long-winded. That's probably why I talk so long. I'm learning to cut down my messages so they don't be so long. But I used to preach an hour, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, because I'm long-winded. Because I am a teacher now, because I was raised by a teacher. I was taught by a teacher. So now... What was taught to me, that's what I preach out. So nobody can really come and put things in my ear. And it, and it's not spiritual. Because if it ain't spiritual, I ain't listening to it. So with that being said, I ain't doing it neither. So that being said, that's why I say in the beginning, people may consider what I'm going to say very selfish. So since that is how I was raised, since my grandmother didn't do those things for me, and I am where I am. I have outlived quite a few people. Thank God. In his plan. In my destiny. On my road. A part of my life. I thank him for that. Since it has brought me this far. I'm not going to change it now. I'm not going to start listening to people. Even though... All my life, I've been pleasing people. But, let me say this. I never had to please mommy. Mommy always accepted me. 
from day one for who I was. She knew my floor. It was like I was living with Jesus. She knew my flaws. She knew my 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 strong points. She knew my negative points. She knew when I was lying. She knew when I was telling the truth. She knew when I wasn't satisfied. She knew when I wasn't happy. She, she knew when I was going through things. And she taught me how to know my children. She taught me how to pay attention to the obvious. And she taught me how to pay attention to the less obvious. So I was able to read my children and know my children. No, I ain't talking about knowing them, they thoughts, being able to read their thoughts and all that. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about knowing them as a person, knowing their likes and dislikes. So with that being said, where the person was saying that they work two and three jobs, just like I said, I got nothing to do with I got nothing to do with it, no nothing against it. Everybody live their life how they choose to live it. And that's what I'm doing. But now it's a flip side to it. I'm living my life no longer how I choose to live it. I'm living it how God chooses me to live it. So I have went for years doing, giving in to my children. No, I wasn't working no two and three jobs. You see what I'm saying? No, I wasn't that parent to, to, to go take my last dollar and go buy them something to eat and I'm sitting up there starving. No, I wasn't that type of person. I mean, I wasn't that parent. I was the parent to take my last and buy something that we all can eat from. And when I say all, I don't mean I had my mount and they had their mount. They had no, no, no. They had their mount and I would say, can I have some? Can I have some? Can I have some? So we all shared. I got something from each one of them because I have four children so all they it was only one of me it was only one of me because me and my husband separated in 1986 and we got married in 1983 and I was 20 years old so that lets you know how old I was so one two 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 three two four two five two six I was 26 years old when me and my husband separated wait 21 20. No, I was 23 years old when me and my husband separated. So from from 1986 until now, I've been taking care of my children. Now they're old enough. They've been old enough. But now they're at a place where they can take care of themselves. But I taught them when I did work, if I had to go to the store, if I had to go to the laundry, I left them in the house and taught them how to take care of themselves. I had a son. My oldest son was responsible for the lives of his his sisters to make sure everything was fine. But I went on and did what I had to do. I had a job where I worked from 4 to 12. And there's a video out there where I brought it up where um, I would go out and leave my son. At the time, my son was about, maybe he was about 12. Because at that time, when ACS stepped in, they said that year he was 12. Because they said he had to be 13 years old before he can be left in the house to take care. I guess he's a teenager now. He had to be 13 years old. So I don't know what the age is now, but back then. Mom, can you tell Jesus to stop making noise? Tell him I said to stop making noise. Um... And um, up to third when he turned th well before he turned thirteen, they said that he was too young to stay in the house. And then they brought it in. Well, if he was thirteen, if he was thirteen, Miss Jordan, then everything would have been all fine. All right, I said, what do you mean? It would have been all right. so you're stating that thirteen years old kids can watch. 
Hey, brothers and sisters, yeah. My Lord. They said something about the Lord. So this is ACS. So I don't know how true it is because I never looked it up. I never, whatever, whatever. So my son was watching my his siblings at a very young age. So I was, I was working. I was working a four to 12. I was working a four to 12 job for about a year. And my son was in the house. So I'm saying that to say that I didn't go out there looking for nobody to, to, to do my job. At the time, I thought I needed to go get a job. I thought I needed to work. I, I thought this is what I was supposed to do. There was no man in the house. So I was like, oh, ain't no man in the house. So let me get out here and let me get a job. Right? Now, people can say whatever they want to say about public assistance. But our welfare or the county or whatever it's called in, in your state. They are there for a reason. And they are there to help. Now, y'all may put it in the concept, oh, they there to help people that can't help themselves. That's what SSI is for. And we all know that a lot of people that get SSI could be working if you want to put it in a work perspective. Every sort of help that's in the United States is for a reason. Look as soon as some disaster take place across country, the United States is out helping them. So why not get your help in your own country? Nah, I'm, I'm just hypothetically speaking. But my point is, is that that wasn't my job. God didn't bring me into the world for me to be out there picking up no garbage. I'm talking about the parks department. Picking up no garbage, throwing it in the trucks and sweeping for a long period of time. He didn't, he didn't br bring me into the world as a woman to go to McDonald's and be cleaning around, cleaning up behind people that should have been taught how to clean up after themselves. So in other words, it would be less work for that McDonald's worker if people was taught to clean up behind themselves and not sit back and, and expect somebody else to do it. Oh, this is their job. This is what they're supposed to do. I've heard people say that. So, that's not what I was born into the world for. The song say... What way? Huh? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, let me get it together. song goes, I was made in his likeness, created in his image, for I was born to serve the Lord, and I, I can deny him, I'll Ways walk beside him, for I was born to serve the Lord. So that's what we was born into the world. That's what I was born. Let me talk about myself. That's what I was born to do. I was born to serve the Lord. Then it goes, my hands were made to help. My neighbors, my eyes were made to read God's word. My feet were made to walk in his footsteps. My body 
is the temple of the Lord. That's what that that's what I was born for. So I wasn't born to go out there and 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 sit in front of a desk and answer a phone for somebody that's sitting and half the time is for a man sitting in his office. Pressing a button, I'll come in my office, take this dictation, take this, take that, da 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 da. Because as the song that's set out in the world, it's a man's world. No, it's God's world. And God gave the knowledge to men to to make these different things, right? But He didn't give the man. The, 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 what's the word? He didn't give the, he didn't, he didn't make the man to boss the woman around. So, I wasn't born for that. So now, since I wasn't born for that, and I finally got it together, and I knew what I was born for, even though I wasn't serving the Lord at the time, I sat myself down, went on to update the public system, fill out all the information, all the stuff that they needed me to have, I had it. Gave it to them, and now they they sending me the money that God has provided for us. For me. Let me let me keep it like that. For me. And just like I said, this is this is my life. This is my thought. This is what's happening in my life. And this is the thought. Now everybody has their own opinion. An opinion is not necessarily the fact or the truth of the matter. So everybody has their opinion. So maybe I can say this is my opinion. Because it may not be the truth. But it's my truth. I had a husband. My husband was supposed to be in the house. Out there working. Taking care of me. Taking care of his children. I ain't supposed to be out there taking care of him and taking care of the house and taking care of the children because God didn't make a woman to do all of that. God made the woman to have some children. God made the woman to give birth to some children. God made a woman to be the helpmate to that man. What's the helpmate? Okay, what's wrong, honey? I don't know. You know, so much going on in this job. I got to do this. I got to do... Okay, honey, it's all right. I'm giving him a massage. I'm combing his hair. Uh, here you go, baby. Here we food. What you want to eat? Well, I want this, that, and the other. All right, no problem. You got it. Now I go in the kitchen or I go to the restaurant or I order on Uber Eats. Here you go, baby. People actually automatically think because you're a wife, you're supposed to go in the kitchen and always cook. No! It don't say nowhere in the Bible that you that a woman got to cook for the man. All the time. He said. A help mate. He said the man. Paraphrasing. Is over the woman. Like Christ is over. The head. Of the church. And he's the head of that man. So now you go get yourself a man. I got myself a man. That didn't want to work. He said, Mac, think I'm going to take care of him. I knew what the Bible said. So you ain't going to beat me over the head to get me to, to go cooking dinner, cooking breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch, da 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 giving you my body whenever you want it, and then you get up and go get somebody else's body. You get up and, and, and go eat with somebody else. You don't take me out to a restaurant, but you're going to take somebody else to a restaurant. That's not what God made me for. So, yes. Sit down. Every two weeks I get my money. If they feel like they're going to cut it off, that's what God allowed. Because as long as I've been on public assistance, every time I would get a job, and I tell you no lie, every time I would get a job, Something would happen where I had to lose that job. I told y'all in my previous videos, I'm working. ACS told me, you got to quit your job in order for you to keep your kids. For real? Yes, Miss Jordan. 
Because the kids, somebody got to be in the house with the kids. If you can't, you ain't got nobody. No, I don't. I ain't got nobody. And you got to go to work. Yeah, I do. I got to go to work. That was my, my, excuse me. I got to go to work. Well, then we're going to have to take your kids. Why you gotta take your? Why you gotta take my kid? Because somebody gotta be there watching them kids. Your young, your oldest child is is twelve, and your long, your youngest child was six, no, four, something like that, four or five, something like that. All right, well I'm gonna quit my job. Oh, I'm enjoying the day. Yes, I am. I'm gonna quit my job. I quit my job, and they still took them kids. So I did what I could do for them, and they still took them. I went and got a job. They still took him. I sat home and didn't do nothing. They still took him. Hold up. Wait a minute. A reality check had to step in sooner or later. I'm walking around here. Got the jitters. And I ain't even taking no cocaine. I ain't doing no drugs. Uh, I'm over here. Uh, mm. I, 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 I got these headaches. I, I, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I, I, I'm so stressed out. Da, 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 da. And, and what's being done? What's being done to help me out? What's being done to bring down my pressure? When I didn't even know my pressure was up. Pressure sky high. 180, 190, over 90. You still walking around? I'm sure you still walking around. Child, please. You should have been up that out somewhere. Yeah, push that high. God is keeping me. I'm stressed out. Every time I turn around, I'm getting a phone call. I'm getting cursed out. I'm getting told off. I'm getting phone slammed in my ear. I'm getting doors shut in my face. I'm getting cursed out. People don't want to listen to nothing I say. And I'm still hanging in there. Oh, let me do this. Let me do that. All right, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm keeping all that bottled into me. And, my, and it's coming out through my pressure. Coming out with me being skinnier than a toothpick. Me, me, me look like I'm deformed and stuck because my bone structure's changing because I'm so stressed out. I can't get myself together. After a while, God had to step in. So, so saying all that to say this, people may say I'm selfish. No, then I'll just be selfish. Uh uh. It ain't all about your kids. No, it's not. Because you could still love them and don't have to buy them everything that's in the store. Every time you walk in the store, they talk about, oh, mama, can I have this? Can I have that? No, I ain't going to get it. Now they mad. They want to tell you off. Now, mind you, this this is a, a, a three-year-old, a two-year-old. Somebody that you got to pick up and put them on the bed and put their legs up and remove the pamper and wash them down and powder their little hind knee and, and, and go hold them in one arm and go to the refrigerator and get the milk. Better yet, what I did, pull up the blouse and breastfeeding and then pumping and pumping and putting milk in a bottle and putting it in the refrigerator so that you can... And soon you'll say, eh, eh, and you getting up, and I'm getting up, and and you're going, I got to say you, because this is the mothers of, of the world that will never change, and you getting up, and you going, and you getting the bottle, and you putting it in their mouth, and they just drinking, drinking mm, 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 and they just love you, they here, because I breastfed mine, so they right here, and you doing all this for them. And then you, they get three years old and you walk in the store with them and they want an ice cream and you tell them no and they fall out on the floor. <laughs> and, 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 and they, and they want to they tell you off at three years old. They go on, go on, go on. They get to be 11, 12, 13. Now, now you want to go to your friend and plot to kill them. It's biblical. Mothers of uh, mothers, uh, 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 turn against daughters. Daughters against 
mothers, parents against children, children against parents, fathers against sons, da 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 And it goes on and on and on and on against one another. This is what sin does. It causes you to start hating people that you're supposed to be love, that you're supposed to love, and, 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 and have you loving people that not, not to hate, but you shouldn't even be paying them no mind. So, um, let me say this so I can end. And I'm trying to teach myself to not have my video so long. So now, I got nothing. Let me say it again. I got nothing against anybody that want to work the two, the one to five to ten jobs to take care of their kids, to take them through college, to do this, do that. Go ahead. I want them to be what I never could be. I want them to have... What I never could no no I'm be honest with you I don't want my I didn't want my children to have nothing I couldn't have because then if I couldn't have it then that means it wasn't meant for me to have. My grandma I can't see and say my grandmother kept me from having a pair of shoes or a pair of Jordans because she didn't want me to have them. That I really think that when people if I had said that let me talk about me if I had said things like that then that made made me feel and think. That I was actually going against the upbringing of my grandparents. I'm going against, or I didn't like the way Bishop Mingo played the part in my life. Didn't like the way Mother Giles played the part in my life. Didn't like the way my grandmother played the part in my life. My grandmother's pay a part in my life. I didn't like it, so now I'm saying, oh, I want to do this, that, and the other because I didn't get to do it, so I want them to do it. No, if I didn't get to do it, then it wasn't for me to do. I, I'm not going to put nothing on my children because I didn't get it. So I ain't going to go out there spending thousands and thousands of dollars on Jordans because I didn't have none. Apparently, I wasn't supposed to be wearing no Jordans. Now I'm wearing them. I ain't going to go out there take take up my last $100 to go buy a whole three-piece suit for my son. Because I feel bad because I didn't get a three-piece skirt suit when I was a child. No! I'm going to go spend my $100 on a three-piece suit for my son because I want him to look good. I didn't go out there spending no money on my children. You know when I spent money on them? On their birthdays. On, on, I, I didn't, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't too much buy too much stuff for Christmas. All, all the Christmas. But I didn't let them. I didn't too much. How can I explain this? I didn't too much buy a whole lot of toys. Let me put it that way. I didn't buy a whole lot of toys. Yo, when Christmas time come around. Y'all see how people really go in on Christmas with their children. Oh, the child been wanting this for the longest and I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it, so I'm going to get it for Christmas. So now you done broke the bank. You done went all up in your savings to go and buy this toy that as soon as it comes out the box, your child done either gave it away or your child done broke it because she got mad with you. Uh, or your child got it over here in the corner and you don't spend $100, $200 for and then here go a toy that somebody only paid $10 for and you can't Take that toy from them. Go take them away from them. And they ready to, they start throwing stuff at you. What are you doing? Give me back my toy. But I just spent $200 over there for that skateboard. I just spent $200 for that bike. And the bike in the garage. And they over there playing with G.I. Joe's. Y'all remember them? Mm -mm. So that's why. Uh-uh. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, when, when I got, when, when, when I got things... When things was given to me, right? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got my pillow. I got this pillow. There we go. When things, when things, when I received things and got things from my grandmother, I was so appreciative. And one thing I can say, oh, I'm my leg. One thing I can say, when I asked for something, I got it. Mm -hmm. I did. 
And you know why I got it? Because I wasn't one that was always asking for stuff. I didn't ask for a lot of stuff. So if I went to mommy and I'd be like, mommy, what? Um, I saw this doll that I like. Can I have it? Can you get it for me? What kind of doll, Sharon? The doll that I saw in Woolworths. Let me see where I get my stuff from. Now, mind you, I didn't know mom was paying attention to me when I was looking at the stuff. And and I come home from school or something like that, and the doll is there. So I didn't always get stuff on occasions, like Christmas or birthday or whatever. I got things randomly, spontaneously. And those was the best gifts. So I did the same thing with my children. And my children enjoyed it. They didn't too much get stuff all the time on a Christmas or something like that. I mean, they did get Christmas stuff, but what I'm saying is I didn't go all out. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't have that mentality that, oh, I got to get this because if I don't get it, they ain't going to they ain't gonna love me. Because see what? I think what really makes children kind of turn against their parents and sometime in their lives is when that time come that they want something and they don't get it. And now mommy can't give it to them as often as mommy used to. Or daddy done left the scene. And daddy mad with mommy so daddy ain't buying me no more stuff. And now the animosity comes to mommy. And now they don't want to listen to mommy. They don't want to do what mommy say. And now mommy got to go through a whole lot. And if it's vice versa, even if it's daddy, you know? <laughs> so let me just say this, and I'm going to end this, that That getting two jobs and all this stuff for for my kids, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I got a job when I could. Being on public assistance in the early part of my life, my age and stuff, I had to work in order to get. They they made us work for the check. That, that, yo, some of y'all probably heard of it. You got to work for that check. I know y'all may see me through something. I got garbage over there. Garbage bag over there, rather. Um, I would, um, I had to work for the check, so they had to back the work. Then after back to work, it was changed from back to work to job search. Yeah, job search, I think it, or either job search first or back to work. It, they kept changing, changing, right? And then it, it became a job center. It was no longer welfare center it was job center hra so you had to work in order to get the car fare you got you 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 had to do jobs so oh it, it was a whole lot of stuff and i had no problem i'm glad it they kind of like broke that down now where you have to be a certain age from such to such and I thank God that the age that they got it to is 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 not for me. Now I may have to go through that once my boys get big. You know, but they in school. That's where the proof of of school letters come from. So as long as they in school, they won't bother the kids. But when they get like uh I think I think is what is it? What what's the um What's that? Job Summer Youth? Is it still Summer Youth or is it another name? I think it's another name. But for Summer Youth, still Summer Youth, it was 16. No, I think it was 13 to, to 16. No, 13 to 21. 
And I think now it goes, what is it, to 23 or something? Because, you know, some kids don't get out of school. They don't graduate from high school till they're 23 or 24 or something like that. So, anyway. So, that's all I uh, I want to see. They probably have bothered my, my, let me finish that sentence. They probably have bothered my grandkids once they get 13. Well, my, my. My grandchild is 13 years old. I wonder if he can get... So maybe it was 16 to 20, 21. Yeah, maybe it was 16 to 21. Because I know my grandchild is 13. I think she's he too young. But we'll find out because it'll start coming up when, when the school year is coming to the end because he's 13. He turned 13 this year. So we'll see. So, with that being said, I'm going to end this video. And I just wanted to comment on that in my perspective. That, no, I did not get all these jobs to please my children. Because half the time when I was working, I, would, I didn't even have my children. I didn't even have my children, so I wasn't working for them. I was working to get them back. And then I, I, I quit the job to keep them. And I had very good jobs. I had city jobs and everything, but they never turned out. They, they never last. So I just didn't have no good good dealings with jobs. So and that's because that ain't what I was supposed to have been doing. Mama, why are you posting your thing on on YouTube? I literally saw it on my switch. Why? Because I was showing my toes. I was showing I was showing my, my nail polish. I can't do it with you. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably get some negative comments about my toe. Why nobody want to see your toe? It's my channel. Hello. I prefer wouldn't you prefer me to 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 um to what's the face my toes and to be up there showing people I mean people people show a lot of stuff that I wouldn't even think about showing. So y'all wanna talk about my toes and my toes. Alright so that's it. That's the end. I'm going to end this. I'm going to play my game a little bit. And then I'm going to go to bed. Well, I'm going to start watching TV. Good night.